It's four o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. This week, starring special guest star Mr. Stephen Giles. Yeah, baby. And welcome, audience. Let me get the chat room open so I can see you guys. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, Michael. How are you? <laughs> we just met for the first time at the road rally um, up on the second floor in the hallway. I've known mm. Steve for, I don't know, maybe he's been on my radar for a year. I've seen him in um, in the chat room here on the big show, and I've seen him uh, on the forum, but hadn't met him in person. I knew what he looked like from seeing his picture on Taxi, and then I saw this guy walking down the hallway, if I may, giving out these awesome stickers write submit forget and repeat the mantra and it's uh, the mantra he's the only guy i know that would go to the trouble of making <laughs> the stickers and he brought some to the office for which i'm very grateful he gave me a couple at the rally and they're somewhere in my house now i think one of them is in my uh dresser drawer and the other one is on a guitar case <laughs> that's i know i have them stuck all over now anyway uh so I'm a fan of his music, and uh, I, because I saw him, you know, like hanging out in the chat room on the show, and uh, see that hang out in the chat room long enough, sooner or later I will chat check room. out your music. <laughs> so Steve is from San Dimas, California. Let's see if anybody there um, can tell us what San Dimas. Free sticker, if you can. Uh... That's right. If you can tell us what San Dimas is famous for. Although I see no action in the chat room right now, somebody—it's delayed the, though. It is delayed. It is delayed because when I watch it, the the I can see you responding to things that I wrote, but it'll be like two or three minutes later. So I know that um, I know that there's probably people right now typing in something, and just because you know you want the sticker. That's right. Although I was having a problem with the chat <laughs> right before you came. Oh well, maybe it died. Maybe you have to refresh it. Maybe all the answers are there. All right, I'm gonna reload. Well, there yep. we go. Yep, yep. That was the problem. Marshall Canyon Stables. <laughs> uh, San Diego's right. high school football rules. That's pretty amazing. Bill and Ted's. Now, see, I don't Al know if we missed the other ones that maybe gave an answer. The first one I see is yeah, Alexander we're... Fox, but then maybe we missed some other people because we're, we're, we're lagging out on you guys. So, All right. Well, Alexander Fox, you're the, you're the first guy. That, yes, in Raging Waters. Um, Alexander Fox is the first guy that showed up on our screen. So you're the one who gets the, <clears throat> the sticker. So um, Aaron will email you, uh, or you know what, email um, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at taxi.com, Alexander, and uh, we will send you the aforementioned sticker, which is really cool. There's also a website for this, by the way. Really? Pedro, Pedro Costa <laughs> is the man. He, we, I told him this, and he like registered the website for it like instantly. <laughs> and so Pedro now. There is a there is a write submit forget dot com. Just in case you were wondering, I don't think there's anything there yet. We were eventually planning on putting like maybe interviews with other writers just about the idea or compiling articles. But I don't even know anymore who came up with this. I think it might have been John Maze Maz. Um, mm. as we know him on the forum, but it goes back years. Um, yeah, and the whole concept behind it, for those of you who aren't aware, is that don't submit one thing and then sit there waiting for your phone to ring for like a month or six months. Just stay busy. Keep cranking out the music, write, submit, forget about it, and repeat the process because that's how the successful members are becoming successful. They're always filling the pipeline with new music. And let's see, Kale says he thinks it was Maz. I think you might be right. Anyway, hey, Kale, how are you? Oh, and Jesse, uh, your wife went to Bonita and Laverne. I, so I teach right, I teach really close to that. I work in that school district. So Very cool. Awesome. Bonita and Laverne. Jesse, do you live here in Southern California? Scott Hansen, what's for dinner tonight, Scott? Okay, so... Um, one of the reasons that I wanted Steve to come to the show is when listening to his music, he's totally captured the, you know, I'm a, um, 
I'm an indie folk sounding guy uh, and he does plenty of other stuff like I said in the email he is very chameleon like but the indie folk stuff um, just reeks of honesty and authenticity and uh, all those words that we use in the descriptors in the listings and I thought it would be good for people to hear you know some great examples and one of well you know what i'm going to play you some things steve brought us a cd with him and i had aaron build me a cd so i'm gonna dig mine out there it is and play you a couple things to exemplify i some. reek i reek <laughs> of indie awesomeness <laughs> that's my next sticker <laughs> that's my next t-shirt i reek i reeka like you read oh, actually, you know what? I wanted to um, let me read you his bio for those of you who don't know anything about him. Um, it's not every year an artist writes 70 plus songs so that he can release nine songs for his first solo album. It's always, it's also not always possible when said artist is a devoted husband, father of two, and a full time middle school teacher, which Stephen is. Stephen has written and recorded hundreds of songs in many different styles. He's also a producer and has worked in writing and recording material for other artists. His song's been heard by 5.1 million viewers on ABC's number one Friday night, Back to the Beginning with Christine Amanpour. 5.1 million people. That's I know, a lot right? of people. It is. Um, along with placements on MTV Real World and NPR's online version of All Songs Considered. Um, why don't you tell them about your Kickstarter project now? Because if I don't mention it, oh, we'll forget. On, okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I am I am a total geek. Uh, if that wasn't readily apparent from looking at me, I work with computers at school. I teach kids computer stuff. And the kids were telling me about this game a couple of years ago called Minecraft. Now, if anyone, if you've heard of Minecraft, plus one. Uh, plus one. Uh, and uh, so I was playing it, and then I participate in this thing called uh, FOM.org every February. It's the February, whoops, February album writing month. It's hard, this backwards thing. It is, isn't it? February album writing uh writing month where you try to write 14 songs in the 28 days of February, which to me seemed impossible. But I, I started doing it in 2008 and realized I could do it. And so uh, this past year, I was playing Minecraft and decided I'm going to write an album of songs about Minecraft. It's ridiculous. It's it's uh, silly. It's um, I have heavy metal songs, hip hop songs, punk songs, pop songs. And I think they're brilliant. I love them. And so I'm doing a Kickstarter to promote it. And even if the Kickstarter fails, I'm going to release them digitally anyway, for sure. So, But anyway, if you're interested in that, yeah, where do they go? Uh, you would go to mrgrocks.com, and you can find my, my Facebook. Or And is it G-E-E? -E? It's G-E-E. -E. Oh, hey, look at this. I love it. High tech. High tech, baby. Boom! Here's a man who understands the production value That's of right. Taxi TV. That's right. I understand production value of Taxi <laughs> By the way, this is my favorite thing. Can we show this? Yeah, absolutely. I love this thing. This is the thing that makes the sound. How <laughs> rad is that? That's our band. I love this. I had to look for... I, I want to write music with that. I spent an entire Saturday <laughs> trying to find this thing, and it took me hours to figure out how to find the right, you know, this <laughs> song. <laughs> And I'm afraid to like press any of these buttons because I can't lose it because I'll never figure out you which You should just bang re record it. I know. I've got it on my phone somewhere. <laughs> I did a remote once in New York. Because that I, thing's amazing. Yeah. I would write a, a slew of songs with that just because it's so quirky Who's, looking. Who did we <laughs> love have it. here? Um, oh gosh, we had like a famous songwriter producer. Uh, I can't think of who it was. Anyway, he spent like a half an hour with this thing after the show was over. And he's one of those guys that could pick up a pencil and a bottle of water and make a song out of yeah. it. And he started working on it. It's, so, I could see the potential yeah. there. It, it's <laughs> it amazing. sounds great. You know, all those critiques you get back that say your strings don't sound good enough, that's because you're not using one of if those. If you were using this, your yeah. strings would sound amazing. And look, it scratches. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, enough of the high-tech stuff. Um, okay, so let me play you. Where did my list go? I am going to play you Stephen songs called Arms Draped Around Like a Blanket. Oh. Um, yeah, that's the one. And you'll instantly hear why. I mean, it's very lo-fi. Notice that the vocal phrasing is kind of all over the place, but yet it sounds absolutely appropriate for what it is now we also get submissions in where people where the vocal phrasing should be on the money 
and it sounds like this, and, it, and <laughs> they get back at critiques saying, your vocal phrasing was sloppy. Now, they could hear this and go, well, what's up with that dude? His vocal phrasing was all over the place, but it works for the song. In the context of what he's doing, it wouldn't be the same song without it. Mm, so right. I'm going to play, I mean, I'm not going to play the whole song because I've got a lot of stuff, he's got a lot of stuff we want to play, so you're going to get pieces of songs today. One, two, one, two, three. I want to be your friend, I want to hold your hand, I want to build a big fort from summer sand, I want to try my best to do the things you like, I want to tie a string on a pretty kite, as we walk along, can you hold on tight? Cause I get real scared when it's dark at night And I swear there's a monster under my bed But then I remember these words you said Don't be afraid I'm gonna watch you sleeping tonight Don't run away I'm pretty sure everything will be all That's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, Lisa's anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, yeah. All right, so notice the, you know, it, what did you record that with? I mean, it was what, like four tracks or something in there? Uh, yeah, there was, I, I think the initial recording was one mic, and I just kind of put it up in front of my face and just sort of played live. Yeah. And then I added the little, I added another vocal mm -hmm. and uh, the little, uh, like a xylophone, xylophone -y thing that I had, and and that was yeah. it, and and uh, I think that one didn't get forwarded, but um, but at the time, and maybe I submitted it to like a Jason Mraz singer songwriter right. thing or something. At the time, it was totally misplaced. I'm like, I haven't heard that song in a while. When you mentioned that one, I think I dismissed it at one point because it didn't yeah. work out when I did it. But I really like I like that one. It's a great song, and um, it totally captures that. You know, it, it's. It's got an innocence about it. It's got a um, a lot of humanity in it. Mm. It's contemporary. Let's see. Did I make notes in that? Hi, one? Pedro and kids. Um, I didn't make any notes about it, but yeah, you know, it, it's all those things. It's uh, I had some notes somewhere about it. Oh, hell, who knows? But, you know, it's <laughs> when you see buzzwords or, or descriptors in the taxi listings, authentic. That mm. is authentic. You can't fake authentic. <laughs> that I guess that's in, endemic in, in the word. Um, <laughs> Scott Hans, I'm looking for the Michael, I uh, used Michael Lasko bobblehead. Um, okay, so you can't fake authentic. Um, you can't fake indie. But yet other members will send stuff in with vocal phrasing that would be equally as ragtag, and they get returned because their vocal phrasing is ragtag, and not on the money, but it should be for the song they're sending. This is a song where if everything was locked in perfectly, it'd be a little too clean and it wouldn't have the charm mm. or the vibe. Right, so right. Totally and I, de I definitely was when I wrote that. I mean, it was based on, I, I forget what the song was. It was like one of the songs in Juno, uh, the White Stripe, it's that White Stripe song, Friends. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it's very loose and like the harmonies are like not even on. And, you know, but it was just, there's like that sweet, yeah. innocent thing so i just i think when i approached it i just really just got in that mindset like i'm just gonna just i'm gonna do this as simple as i can and just be real sincere at delivery and um so it came out like it did so that begs a question um how much do you study other people's work i mean did you you obviously made somewhat of a conscious effort to do this in a indie you know yeah ragtaggy fashion um, and, and you're such a chameleon, which I'm going to play you some examples of other stuff, which is, you know, 180 degrees out, out, out of this ballpark. 
how much time do you study or do you study what other people do and do you make mental <sighs> notes like wow this artist the you know part of their charm like you know iron and wine does this a lot and then that stuff is stored in like the yeah. steve dial's bank and you just pull it out at will or no. does it just happen naturally no no i some of them there's some that are like we always use the phrase wheelhouse mm -hmm. so there are some <laughs> yes, songs do, there are we? some songs that are if they're indie folk songwriter that's like my my wheelhouse like my go-to pick up a guitar in a kind of weird tuning and just kind of play a sad song i could do those all day other songs uh, one of the songs that we've had the most success with, um, Pedro Costa and I, it's called Pull Down the Sun. Mm -hmm. And that song, I, I was uh, matching it to, um, uh, Pedro, what was the song? Phoenix, 19, it's, it's a band called Phoenix. And there was a listing. And I took that song, I tore it apart. I, I, looked, at, I looked at every section of the song. I wrote down here, keyboard in, guitar mm -hmm. in, percussion changes. And I really analyzed the song. And then I took... And I came up with my whole idea for my own song, but production-wise, that. That I production stuck map. with it yeah. until the song kind of became its own song. I was really proud of it because it didn't sound anything like the Phoenix song, I didn't think, but it was definitely like, oh, that would be on the same radio station. So I was really, by the time I was done, I was really happy. Um, but then like this song that arms around like blankets, I mean, I just wrote the lyrics and sang it once or twice and I was done. Yeah. But that other song, I spent an entire, I don't know, 16, 20 hours in one day, and it's just like adding individual little tiny parts to yeah. kind of perfect it. So it was a very different process. So I'm going to jump way ahead to a question I was going to ask later in the show, but we're kind of on the subject now. So a lot of members are phobic about technology. And mm. um, I, I see this with my daughter, Hannah. She writes really, really strong songs, but and she can hear the production in her head. And she's got GarageBand, and she's pretty quick on GarageBand, but yet she's got this thing about she can't plug, she can plug in a microphone, but then she just won't do her own engineering or production. And I'm trying to encourage more members to start where they're at, rather than hearing somebody who's very well versed and, and sophisticated and pretty far down the road, they could take that as their example and go, okay, what could I write that's really simple and sincere and honest and all that stuff and record that? Because like you said, a microphone here and then, you know, another passive guitar and the xylophone and a doubled vocal and you're done. Done. So it can't and I be. didn't think about it either. I wasn't like, oh, the guitar is not at the right angle. I mean, I just stuck yeah. a mic up there so that I made sure I played once and said, oh, good, it can hear me. It hears the guitar. I'm going. Right. And that's all I did. Um, and uh, But I, for a long time, I was definitely afraid of the technology. I wasn't afraid of the technology. I just felt like I wasn't good enough or I didn't have... You know, I had friends that were in, had their own studios, and I sort of depended on them to record me. And I finally got to the point where things weren't going fast enough for me. They weren't, I couldn't get into their studio. It was too expensive. I thought I could spend $1,000 and record at my friend's studio, or I could spend $1,000 on myself, get Pro Tools, and just learn how this thing works, you know, like learn how to use that program. And I had been using four tracks, and I mean, your iPhone, you can get a, a decent four track on your iPhone, the iPad, Carla Kay Barlow, she does yeah. these amazing recordings all on the iPad. It's sick. Do you know, um, she's disgusted our sponsor, with her abilities. our sponsor at the road rally, Sonoma Wireworks, um, makes a four track for the iPhone. Oh, for the and, iPhone. And I think they make an eight track for iPad. That's my son-in-law. My daughter, Sarah, oh, wow. met Hayden Bursk at the road rally four years ago. And that's what he does for a living. Oh, wow. His programs app. So, uh, and you yeah. know what? It's like, so for the fear, for those of you that are afraid of the computers, I'd say, I mean, there are some very simple free programs like Audacity um, is a program I've used for you. I use it for things still. Um, it's it's free. It's spelled A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Audacity. Um, and uh, you can get a, a USB mic for 50 bucks. I mean, you could use anything. And you could be up and running recording a song like the one you just heard um, that sounds uh, as good as, as good as the song you just heard, which wasn't much. I mean, there wasn't much to it. A guitar and a xylophone, and I sang twice. 
Um, so uh, my encouragement to you, um, if you're out there and that's something you don't do, is that it is very attainable um, and, and doesn't require any, you know, I have no background in studio recording. I didn't do any schooling in studio recording. Um, so, you know, you, you can do it. It helps to have other people around you. The forum is great. Um, I've had so much help. I couldn't have done what I do. Um, I wouldn't be where I am if I hadn't been involved in the forum. Um, taxi forum. Taxi forum. I met Pedro Costa. Um, Pedro has been, uh, I think we both say this of each other, that um, we found someone that I think we both are family men. That mm -hmm. helps. You know, we both have similar schedules. So for us, when we, uh, you know, when he, he says, I got to go, the kids are, you know, I don't freak out on him like, I'll never work with him again. Right. <laughs> I'm like, because my kids just threw a fit too, and I got to go. Um, <laughs> so, so you I guys think complete each other. We complete each other. <laughs> <laughs> The spoon, well, much spooning happened. Let's just say that. We, we had a great time. We, we got to roommate. Is that too much? Too much information? Oh, you guys were roomies at the rally? We were roomies at the rally. So the nice. first time we met each other uh, was at this rally in person. And okay. we had been working together for a whole year. We would actually had some success. Um, but our first, our first time uh, meeting each other in person was at this rally. It was so great. It was like... We had always known each other. It was yeah. a great thing. And you know what? There was several people on the forum where it was like that, where like we we had talked online, and then when we met, you know, it was like, oh, cool. Yeah. So um, all the other thing I got to remember, I just saw Patty. Um, we're doing this thing called Get Your... Can I... We yeah. can't say the word ass on the... Uh, oh, too late. Get Your yeah. Ass Writing Songs. I said shit a couple episodes. <laughs> okay, so beep. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, it is a Facebook page, yeah. and it is basically right. It comes out of that writing a song a week tradition, right. um, just for the sake of writing. There's no listing. There's no. There's a theme. And you, and you don't have to achieve greatness with every no. song. It's about getting nope, them out. Nope. And our whole process is quality doesn't matter. Yeah. Quantity. It's all about quantity, people. Because and so, the quality will come with the repetition of it, creating. It will come. And I think some people are a little bit afraid of that. For some people I've seen, they've found it to be very freeing. Yeah. They feel very like, oh my gosh, I can just write yeah. whatever I want. Because, I mean, ultimately, who of us got into music because we're like, oh, I need to simulate this. And we got into music because we love music. We love yeah. making music. You know, it, it's it's life. It's you know, without music, it doesn't, there's certain things in life that don't have meaning. And so being able to write a song, it's like we had a, one of our themes this week was doppelganger. That was Michelle Lockie. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for that. That was a tricky one. Is she here? I don't know mm. if she's here. Oh, you know what? I don't think she can get on tonight, but she was going to watch the text, but oh, okay. she came up with that, this theme, but in so you our guys group, do a weekly theme? we have a weekly theme okay. and it's just everyone, each week it changes. The person who had it last week assigns it to someone else. Okay. So the group kind of runs itself and uh, you write a song. It, the theme comes out on Saturday. The song has to be submitted your time, midnight um, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then you get the whole week to, to write it and submit it. We have like a, like basically there's a post and people can, and there's they no, sound cloud. There's no contest, like somebody wins No or one's win. Well, you get bragging rights. Uh, okay. I, we hinted at one point that there'd be some sort of certificate, you know, that I'll probably make a PDF and it'll say, right. you're cool. And it'll be, I'll draw it, hand draw it and paint <laughs> on right. the computer or something. Um, but it's been great. Like, you know, a whole bunch of people have been participating. We want to get more. I think the more you write, just like anything you do, the more you do it, the better you get at it. The more you, you know, if you want to get better at running and running a mile, you run the mile every day and then you build your speed up. You I know? always use golf. Why is it that people <laughs> think that artistic endeavors, you're either born talented and amazing or not? But I mean, right. come on. Nobody who plays golf on, you know, like let's say you're a Saturday golfer three times a month. You wouldn't expect to go play in the PGA Tour unless you, you know, did eight to 12 hours a day of repetitively hitting balls with the coach telling you how to tweak your, your swing. Right. But yet they right. think that musicians are like they pop out of their mommy and you're, you're talented or you're not. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, no, right. I, I've it, watched it's, really it's, 
you know, productive taxi members, Paul Otten, who's on the show today or in the, in the chat room, is one that comes to mind. I've watched him mature a lot over the, what have we known each other, two and a half, three years? Um, a lot of you guys I know personally, and I've watched this progression, and it's because they just keep doing it. Yeah. It's, uh, I can't emphasize enough, like, uh, and I'll use the listings, actually, I've looked at the listings, and we'll have our challenge, and I'll be like, oh, you know, maybe I'll take that challenge and bend it into that list, you know, Yeah. It, it, but if I don't hit it, I don't care, because I'm in the process of pr- creating, and by doing that, I have already written a couple songs where I'm like, oh yeah, that one's going to get developed more, I'm going to use that later, I know someone's going to be asking for something in this genre, mm-hmm. and I have already got this tune that's like, ready to go you know um but the freedom in writing just to write for the sake of writing which is as writers we should try to do as much as we can and and i understand the challenge too because i know that there's a lot of people in the group that are you're you're working it you know you're you are writing cues and you are submitting things very consistently to a lot of different libraries and so finding the time um uh is is tricky um, to even like, how am I going to find the time to write a, write, write a song for this, uh, contest contest, we'll put it in quotes, um, and then write the music I need to write. And I, I say, uh, you know, if you want to be a better runner, you got to run more. I say, you need to get in there and run. You're going to golf, you got to golf more. So this is that, that, that time where I say, you know, you got to write more. And, and, and if you're writing enough where you're, you're submitting and you're, you've got libraries you're working with then you know you don't you may not need this i like the i love the community i love the community of taxi um it is it's so invigorating for me to um just to be able to exchange ideas to talk with people that are in the same place i am so fom yeah. the community there was very similar um very supportive but not on a not as much on a professional like it wasn't focusing on the professional side of things it was more on the creative just the creative side, like to, to get it, started writing. Is it a spectrum of writers? Like some it is people a are, are just brand new at it. Man, you've got people that literally probably just picked up a guitar okay. and couldn't put two notes together. God bless them. And but but the community is so supportive. It's like, hey, you know, you wrote a song. That's so cool. And um, and then Taxi for me has been that step into um, it's like almost adulthood. You know, like. Mm-hmm. This is where you come to say, I'm a professional. I'm doing this because I'm a professional. You know, I don't think I felt like I could call myself that until maybe last year. Um, and I'd say I'm, I start on the five-year plan. I'm probably on my second, my second year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but I, I, have, I actually was at a Christmas party, and I told my boss, <laughs> I said, I'm also a professional musician. And that was like, I have not told many people that, but it was my principal. And... And he's like, oh, wow, you do, you know, and I talked to him about what I do with Taxi, and um, I felt like a grown-up. I felt like um, the fact that I could actually say I'm a professional was was a, a big deal. Um, Have you, you mentioned that, you know, sometimes you write at listings, or you create something for Fawn, and then you, or Fawn, and you hear that, Thing inside of that song go this one could become something so you kind of put that one in its own little box and save it for a later day when you can develop it more and I think you mentioned before we went on the air that you like writing to listings that you like that structure other mm, members a lot of people complain it's like oh taxi they just want to pigeonhole you they want everything to be formulaic and mm. they feel so entrapped by what the listings request I personally would like the structure. I like having targets and goals, but um, I can understand how people who are just really creative people and they think that they just want to emote and let it flow out of them and create yeah. what they create, and the industry needs to come to that, come to them. Right. There, there's something to be said for that. Um, so, how do you feel uh, about the whole subject? Well, you know, I uh, I remember Paul was. They were talking. You were. You, I think you were interviewing him and like felt. Do you feel like you're whoring yourself out? Um, oh, that's right at the rally. At the yeah. rally, and he's like, "No, because I'm doing I'm doing what I love. You know, I'm, I'm making music. And for me, uh, it's you know, as a little boy in the bathroom when you're peeing, there's a little target there. I love that. <laughs> I love shooting at the target. So having a target for me is great. It's like peeing. Music is like peeing. That's and not that's good. why Paul's <laughs> initials good. are P O. P O. Um, yeah. No, I I think that uh, having 
I think most people that have no goal, I mean, look at uh, Guns N' Roses, Chinese Democracy. Good Lord, that album, did it ever come out? It, uh, they they spent, I don't know, it was like a decade or something trying to release right. that record. I think not having guidelines, not having any limitations is harmful to creativity. I think creativity is greatly fostered within some kind of confines, a time confine, a, a, a theme, um, monetary, you know, like the reality, if you're a band, you're a touring band and you have the studio for two weeks, we have to create an album. Mm -hmm. We got two weeks. So uh, I always used to wonder, how did those bands write those albums in two months? You know what? Or two weeks. They had to. Or how about they the had Beatles to. doing an album in a day or two? Right. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Did they write all the songs A lot of them the were studio? written and road tested. In the early stages, they were written and road tested in the clubs in Hamburg. And um, and then they, and when they got to the studio, they just had to get it Yeah, they it just out. Right. They would just do it three or four or five times and be done sometimes <laughs> in a take or two. But later on, the funny thing is, later on... Um, they basically had the studio on lockout and they would show up late in the afternoon and have a bunch of people come and visit. And the more time they had, the less productive they became. Mm -hmm. Although they were one mm -hmm. of the few bands that in a less productive situation did actually become more creative and took their stuff in a different direction. So, but they're an, an anomaly, I think. And Brent, I am going to, I think next year my taxi class will be songwriting is like peeing. I'm there gonna, you go. I, I think that class could be in the main ballroom. Brett likes his beer. He could be your pee guy. <laughs> pee um, in the cup. So I want to play you guys another song called High Octane. And this is completely different. This is, oh, yeah. this is a song that could be used for like a sports TV promo. That's what um, it was, I think, originally. Yeah, yeah that's okay, what we were thinking. That's pretty what we obvious thinking. to me when I heard it. This so, is okay. with Pedro Costa also. All right. So let's have a listen to High Octane. <laughs> That's what I want to add in, too. I want to add that. Yow! So I'm going to go back now and play the first song. I'm going to play like 30 seconds of the first song oh, and then go into this song. Just to I show love you. that song. I mean, obviously, this is a collaboration <laughs> with, with Pedro and Steven. But, so we're going to listen to the first one and hear how sloppy, lack of a better word, sloppy. Um, how, yeah, just the two different production styles, yet they're both completely and utterly appropriate for what they do. So this is back to arms wrapped around oh, yeah. like a blanket. It's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> Same guy. Okay, and then... Okay. I like to rock. And now I we're going to go to something that's kind of in the middle called Jump Into Your Head. Oh. I don't even... <laughs> I totally forgot about this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so somewhere in the middle. I mean, I would have minus one that one, by the way, but <laughs> well, production we, value. No. <laughs> but but that would right. get used for a Subaru commercial. I'm yes, I'm open to that. Subaru, I'm open to that. <laughs> in a minute, it would get used for that. Now I'm going to take you to one that is guitar vocal again. This is called um, 
maybe oh you may he you keep you as, as he goes. goes oh wow okay one two three four <clears throat> Got the idea that one was kind of in the middle it was also yeah. singer songwriter very intimate that would be... one guitar that's one microphone one guitar did you capo up on that one yeah it was capo and, and, and that's all it was and, and you know what that could easily get used in a feature film it's almost more cinematic than it is tv although it could be used in tv but what was the movie of jennifer aniston and paul rude where they find the um commune um they end up in a commune it, wasn't a huge movie it was out like a year and a half ago anyway there's a scene where he leaves and he's walking down the road basically he said screw it to the commune and he leaves jennifer aniston behind i never would have left her behind <laughs> but <laughs> big mistake yeah big big mistake he goes back later for okay. um smart man but he's walking down you know a, a gravel road and then it becomes a, a piece of blacktop that's just miles long and you see the hills perfect for that it's just one guy and a guitar but it's all about the attitude and the approach and i'd like to suggest releasing the movie yes with this song there well you never know when they put it out on dvd which they may have done already you know a lot of times they do suggest re-releasing it on dvd again (laughs) saying with a new improved soundtrack i'm i yes i'm anyway so there you go same guy and this range of you know, really indie, I don't give a damn about <clears throat> vocal phrasing or being, you know, pitchy because it's part of the vibe of right. what I'm trying to get across right. to something that's obviously really well produced to something that's in the middle. It's simple and a little tighter and not so mm-hmm. indie, but the magic of the song is the lyric and the intimacy with which you delivered it. Now, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, there was a question that I really oh, yes. want to address, which uh, was, how balance. do you find the time? How do you balance the time? I'm amazed. I, so I've been happily married for 18 years. 18? How old are you? 41? I thought you were 27. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. It's okay. the beard. Yeah. It's the beard. Man. The magic of the beard. No, I'm I'm old guy. All right. Um, and <laughs> I... Um, I one, my wife is super supportive. Um, she's she. I was a musician w- when we were, you know, dating, and um, and so she knew I, I loved music, and so has always supported me. Um, I think fi- that that's helped obviously a lot. But physically, there's just only so much time in the day. Yeah. I teach full time, um, and one of the great things about being a teacher is that I do have summers off, mm-hmm. and so I dedicate a lot of time to music. Um, I, um, I, I plan specific times during the week where I specifically, I have a date on my, you know, where I go into the studio and I don't, I just go in. You have a separate room, you shut the door. I have, this, yeah, I have a room that's my, just my studio. It's a dedicated room. Um, and I, um, I go into that room with a plan to complete something. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now I have I have like three or four collaborations going on. I, Michael Stemmel, I have a collaboration with. Sorry, Michael, I haven't got yours yet. Um, it's on the list. Uh, Michelle Lockie, I'm finishing one. I just finished one with Casey Hurwitz. Um, uh, Boy, the, there's the a cast whole of characters. Huh? I, there's a whole cast of characters. Great. I mean, um, but what I try to do is I, I I go in on like Wednesday nights is one of the nights, and I go in on Wednesday nights. Um, and the kids are at church, and and so during that time, I from probably six o'clock to nine o'clock, three hours, I have a list of, of songs I'm going to tackle or work on, uh, and I work on that part. Like 
I'm going to finish the guitar part for this song or I'm going to finish the vocal track for this song. And I just do it. And I make that kind of small achievable goals mm -hmm. instead of writing an entire song. Sometimes I, I might for the for the the G yaws, yeah. G Y A W S, get your ass writing songs. Um, I might take an hour and decide I'm going to write a song and literally not worry about production, but just like set up my, you know, my phone or mm -hmm. one microphone and just play just to finish something. I have a goal. I have a specific goal usually in mind, and I have a specific time and place. So I have a sacred place that's for music. Really, I don't do anything else there. I don't do a lot of, you know, video games or watching movies. I, I go into this space just to write music. So when I get there, I'm in that music mindset more Again, often. Again, comparing it to another discipline, if you were a sculptor, you would fully expect a sculptor to have a studio right. and go in there and work. And right. get, people think music is something that comes when you feel the moment, and you might go three months and not feel the moment. Mm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to say something that I don't think I've ever said on the show before, but I've noticed, uh, you mentioned that the kids go to church. I have noticed an incredibly high percentage of successful members who... Um, are religious or at least go to hmm. church. Hmm. It's amazing to me. Um, it's something that you, I don't know, maybe it's a misconception on my part, but I generally think of musicians and artists as being fairly secular, but yet I've time and time and time again, hmm. the uh, members that I've had come on the show or members that come to the office will mention that they're involved in their church. It's another community hmm. as well. It is. Uh, yeah. Uh, the church, uh, well, I'll, uh, I mean, if without my church, like I wouldn't have played music. Probably, I mean, my first really? when I was in church, I know a lot of people grew up singing, maybe in the choir. Like mm -hmm. if they were in church, um, you know, I grew up. There was a youth pastor, and he let me play harmonica in the band. Which at the time I didn't realize that's like giving someone a triangle or something ridiculous. <laughs> and like here's a tambourine, go in the corner and play. But I thought I was totally rocking out. Like there was a band, and I was Look playing the harmonica, <laughs> and uh, I thought I was pretty cool. Um, oh, that's right, Jay Giles. Jay Giles, that, that, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even mean the pun. People, it, it's not me. It's not me. But um, And then I would, uh, uh, then he had a guitar in his office, and I still have that guitar. Um, and so you has, stole it? No, he, he, he I said, can I, have, can I have the guitar? I want to learn how to play. And he says, yeah, just take it. So he gave me this guitar. How old were you? I was my freshman year of high school, ninth grade, so... Um, that's 14 a, or 15 and I really age. hadn't played a lot of music before then I yeah. loved music um, but I hadn't done a lot of playing music and so I, I did a lip sync at church we had a lip sync contest and I was lip syncing to this wicked heavy metal band like <laughs> at church it was cool though it was a cool church um, and uh, and so we did this heavy metal song and I thought oh, I, I think I could play some of that you know like so I started learning metal riffs and and like really learning how to play took a few guitar lessons at the local guitar shop and and I basically would sit around my house all day just playing scales and like learning how to play but kind all of self taught uh, I, I had lessons I had lessons I, I took guitar lessons but a lot of it was was someone showing me a couple chords and then I just learned it and I I, you know, the one thing I regret that I wish I'd done more of is learn more cover songs, um, like really dive into learning. Like I was never in a like a really serious cover band. Um, and that is something I, I do now. I do learn songs and, and but I wish that's one thing I was like, oh, I wish I'd done more of that. Why? Um, just to learn the art form, you know, it, it's the, because it's I'm communicating in this uh in music and so in music there's a language there's a common um there are common language you know verse chorus bridge hook mm -hmm. you know I, I look i wish i'd known more of that at a younger age but you know i i wouldn't change i wouldn't change what's happened i, I think my life has brought me to where i am right now um to have the abilities i have right now to meet the people i've met right now you know and and, and if i had done things differently i wouldn't be where i am and Maybe so, I should start a taxi church. <laughs> I mean, we've it's called got, the Forum. Yeah, we've it's got, called the Forum. We've already got a cult that meets once a year to yes. be called the Road Rally. Um, wow, that's really cool. And, and are your kids respectful when you go into your studio? You know, in your time. I mean, you, yeah. you mentioned they're out of the house, but if they come home early or they, you know, don't have no, the they run back. They run in. Yeah, yeah, they'll run in. And, and if and you give them the hey. I'm like they, right in the thick of something. They're they cool they know, to yeah. They usually they right. they do. When they were a littler, you know, I, I had to do all my recording like late at night mm -hmm. or um, 
you know, early, early in the morning. And I do that now too. I wake up, I wake up, um, the kids get up around 6 45, seven o'clock so we can get ready for school. So on some days, like the ends of the weeks, Thursdays and Fridays, I'll wake up at five, you know, or, you know, if I'm really, I'm not sleeping four forty something like that, I'll get up and go out in the studio and I'll just start working on a picking out some chords for structure, you know, just to get something going. How and I'll play things, it all MIDI so it's quiet. How many things a week do you complete, do you think? One or two. You okay. know, I mean, like, a little, like, just like a song idea for the songwriting contest. You know, I can write one of those in, in an hour or two. But, um, like, a completed piece, I, I don't finish that many per week because I'm... It, uh, I was writing cues... Um, for a, this website called Audio Jungle, mm -hmm. um, and actually made a little bit of money doing that. Um, uh, and so I was just, I would wake up, I would start a queue on Thursday morning, or maybe Wednesday night. Uh, I would get the chords, I would write out the chords so that I could not have to relearn it every time. Right. So I actually use staff music and like, uh, but wow. I still wrote G, C, D, or whatever. But um, I felt very, staff. I felt much more like a musician when I wrote on staff music. Um, and then I, the next day I would, I would add in, I kind of had a pattern like, okay, I'm going to add my acoustic guitars, I'm going to add the bass, and I, you know, I could usually bang that out in an hour, you know, get most of the rhythm track, the drums, um, and then I did a whistle. I did a couple tracks mm -hmm. of like whist, like instrumental, like happy, go lucky whistle songs. Um, and so within a I, those I did like, I could do one or two a week of those. The songs where I do a full song, like the stuff I do with Pedro. I mean, those those evolve over weeks um, sometimes. It, it depends. If we have a deadline and we think we can nail it, you know, we might work on something and I'll spend a huge chunk of Saturday, do you, you know, throw finishing stuff out? something. Do you ever get halfway down the road with a piece and go, you know, this one's just not coming yeah. together and just mm -hmm. walk away? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and, but I'll tell you what, like you played some of like that arms around, like I have yeah. not listened to that song since you played it. Um, and I really like it. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could use that for something. Absolutely. I should be submitting that oh, to other th things. That would get used for montages easily. Um, Directors? This is for your next montage. All right, I want to play something off the CD that you bro brought. Um, and I, I, like, this one is one that I brought. Yeah, which I love. By the way. Yeah, I love that one, too. It's very um, different, too. Should we listen to Pull Down the Sun? Yeah, Pull Down the Sun. Okay. Oh, the songwriting contest, for those of you that are wondering, it's it's on Facebook. Um, it's called uh, Get Your Ass Writing Songs. Actually, I, could, whoever, Patty or somebody, if Patty or someone could uh, post the link to that or, or uh, the keywords they have to search for. Um, it's on Facebook, and I think it's G-Y-A-W-S. I think if you type that, I don't think there's anything else with that particular abbreviation. Anyway, that's someone was asking about the songwriting contest. Again, contest in quotes. Because there's. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's more personal pride. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, what song is this? This uh, is Pull Down the Sun, and Pedro Costa is the mix master for the song that made the song. Oh, this is happen. the one we were talking about before. Yeah, the this show. is okay. a big, big song for us. Cool. This is all right, this is 
applause. Yay. Yeah. Um, this, someone asked, how many people are you working with on this yeah. song, uh, Sleepy Tom? It was my wife and I. I, I sat down and woodshedded with this song. Uh, basically, most of the song was written on one Saturday um, and recorded. And it's it's program drums, uh, but all the other most of the other instrumentation is live. So uh, gang vocal was my wife and I adding lots of layers. Um, Pedro may have sung on this. I don't know if Pedro sang on it, and I think he added maybe a few of the keyboard things. But in a lot of it, this, I had a cheesy Casio keyboard, mm -hmm. so that main keyboardy thing is from a cheesy 80s Casio that I got from a friend. Um, uh, so basically there were three people involved. I did a lion's share of the recording and then Pedro just ripped a new one when he mixed it. I mean, it sounded like a whole new song. And, and it's, I couldn't believe how good it sounded. It's, <laughs> I was it, so It could stoked. be on any like indie pop chart. It would fit right in. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this the, I, that's that was what we were going for with that one, and, and it and it that one's the one that recently got placed on um, the Mindy Project, right? And uh, uh, and that was one written for a taxi listing. So taxi, I would never have written that song without that listing. Like that song wouldn't have existed. In fact, both of the songs I've had placed that haven't yet been placed by taxi. I'm waiting. I can't wait for the ta for it to be, but. Another song that I wrote and that Pedro mixed uh, was placed on an ABC show. And it, it came because I created a song I never would have written if it hadn't have been for a taxi listing. So I'm given some, I'm given the assist to taxi. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, I want to play you guys something that's, again, completely different, but exceptionally well done and really creative and cool. And this one is called, um, I can't read my own writing, Surf's Your Oh, Surf's Up on six. Okay, oh, that was with my old band, so. Okay. Um, yeah, this one's, this one's pretty different. And it's cool. Thank you. That's 27 year old Steve. That's that's 21 year old Steve. Really? Yeah. Surf rock meets loser. Yes. Now this is a. So that was my band that I started with. Please wait, you just walk by Did this 20 years ago? No, 90, 95? 18 years ago. Almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Alright. Alright, now that one. Let me lay down a little information on that. One, that was not me in the studio by myself. <laughs> that was with a band called Push Start Wagon that I was in in the 90s and the beginning of 2000s. A great, great, great band. Every person in that band could, could and is a producer, engineer, songwriter. And um, you mentioned that back then you were still intimidated by the whole I was intimidated side. by the recording you, side there. That was right. in a legit studio in Long Beach. Um, uh, it was awesome. Rec great. We had a great, we had a producer engineer. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't, I mean, that was our song, but I, you know, I couldn't do that necessarily by myself. Now the talent on there is there's great players, man. Everyone in my band was, but you wrote that. I wrote, yeah, I helped write that. Okay. So, I helped write that. Again, another example band of effort. Of doing band effort. something very, very different. different. From, yeah. 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 Um, this, Vicious Kisses? Yeah. Want me to play it? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
I like this one. Vicious Kisses. Another one I wouldn't have written without a taxi listing, and it's been forwarded, so. T-Rex questions that people ask um first are there live instruments uh do you write uh are these live instruments or virtual any virtual instruments the drums are all virtual um all the guitars are live um all the vocals are vocals are live and, and the drums were not so this was just layers of guitar um, I spent a lot of time crafting that one too, listening to a listing. There was a track, a listing track. I was like, oh, I love that song. It was called, uh, uh, it was another one about kisses. It was three songs that had the word kiss in it. In fact, when I started the song, I forgot about the kiss part. Oh, really? And I had already started writing the lyric. And I'm like, oh, I need to, <laughs> it needs to, because all the song, it was, uh, uh, it was an old uh, Echo and the Bunnymen song, right. Sugar Kisses. Sugar kisses. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. That was like yeah. And so that, there was that song, and then there was another one by a band called Magic Wands. Um, and so I got really excited when I heard the listening. Like, oh my gosh, that's such a great song. So then I was like really inspired to write a song. Did you grow up in a musical home? There was a piano, and my mom sang, but it wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot of music. My dad jokes that that uh, in church people paid him not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so he. But uh, my mom sang, and but it wasn't like a like a you know there were no professional musicians in my home. Because so you, I'm you obviously got a gene from somewhere in the family. Yeah, I mean, somewhere I got pretty something. Darn musical. Um, what else do you want to listen to? Um, really? I remain is a really cool one that's kind of different than those two. It's like okay. the real sad singer songwriter thing. Any other? Yeah, Sugar Kisses. That was a song. Um, that's Any place where you can go listen online, um, newcoolnow.com is another website of mine, New Cool Now, and you can sort of find stuff. So this song we're about to hear, 
I submitted to Taxi. I really believed in the song. I really believed in the song and thought it was great. I loved my performance, but I got critiques on it like it didn't sound full enough. So I went back and uh, decided I believed in the song enough that I was going to make some of the changes the the people so had. The you taxi believe members. the screeners, yes. I believe the screeners, and I said, all right, I'm going to uh, – I'm not – I, I love the song as is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add something to it, and right. I added something to it, and Can't I liked I liked what I did. It was very subtle, but it got forwarded after that. Interesting, right? So I and made the changes. It's not like they sit down and make notes. If Steve Giles ever you know does what we say, <laughs> then we'll forward it. Then we'll forward yeah, it. No, that but happen, but so I well. think because the the critique was spot on, and and I, I was seeing it, you know, like I think a lot of us can relate when we first write a song, it's the best song. You know, of course. Right, when you write your latest song, it's the best song you've ever written a lot of times. Uh, so you have that attachment to it. But as I pulled back and I saw these critiques, I saw several, two or three critiques in a row that said the same thing. So I was like, wow, can't deny that. All right. I guess I'm going to go. I'm going to I put it on my list and I said, I'm going to revisit this the next time I see a listing. And I saw a listing that was coming for a song like this. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I'm going to do the things they said. I did it and it did get forwarded. Cool. If these skies could speak, put voice to my shame, I know what they'd say. What you're fearing If these stars were sweet Then they'd hide my face But they all call my name When you're near me mm -hmm. Gotta watch that string noise <laughs> I'm afraid we'll drift into the blue sky. I'll fade away, and I'll delay in telling you what. question um do you do more instrumentals than songs or vice versa say that again oh more, uh, instrumentals versus songs percentage -wise. Uh, i write more songs probably although in the last year or so i've done quite a few more instrumentals than mm -hmm. i normally did and um and they're a lot of fun and they're, they're for me those are definitely easier to do yeah, you the lyrics, lyrics right it's yeah. the lyrics man uh sometimes the lyrics will kill you um uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I'd what, say I write more songs than instrumentals. What do you use for drums? I use um, Superior Drummer. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what I use. I do play live drums on one or two songs. I have one that's been forwarded um, that I play live drums on. It's like a Black Keys thing. So I can play like a, you know, a sloppy, raw blues guy. That's Time Ain't On Your Side. Yeah, I want to play that. Okay, that, that's a, I like that uh, one. The, this is this is a song I believed in that I kept redoing over and over and over again until I got it. Like, I was just like, I think this is a good song. I gotta. Didn't we just have a great listing for? A, oh yeah, yeah. There's a, a pretty indie to, blues thing. It just came out today. Yeah, um, I'm actually thinking hit, of submitting this to that. A hit TV show, and yeah, that's one of those jobs where white stripes, black keys. Yeah, we know the supervisor. He loves Taxi. He's used stuff from Taxi, and we love getting you guys 100 percent when we can. Play Biatch. 
sorry, I'm going to start it over in a second. Um, everybody pay attention to this. When you see a blues rock listing, this is exactly what they're looking for. Right here, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love play dress. Real drums. I love that one. I love that one. Everybody loved that one. Okay, so some of the questions we saw fly by. Um, Are your lyrics planned, or do you write them top of your head? Lyrics planned, top of my head. Uh, Usually top of my head. And then I just, I edit them slightly. Okay. Um, mm, That's, usually it's like the first thing that comes out of my, whatever comes out first is where it takes the song. And then, are you a lyric guy first and melody later, or whatever it is? I'm usually pick up a guitar, start strumming, and then sing. Okay. I have done some that I've been writing where I'll write the lyrics um, first and then compose. But I'd say in probably 80% of the time I start strumming and then something comes to me, and it'll just be whatever I'm thinking about. Or if we had like a theme of the week, you know, mm-hmm. like for uh, Gios. Um, uh, or for FOM, when I do FOM, usually you're writing... F- oh, by the way, let me plug this one time, too. This is in February, and you try to write 14 songs in 28 days. It is revolutionized the, my confidence that I could do it. Uh, there's a... FOM.org. FOM.org, followed by Taxi, of course. No, Taxi first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <I've, laughs> Cover. Uh, but so lyrics, um, I do whatever works, like, but um, I tend to pick up a guitar, start strumming, and then I'll sing to it. And then that, that kernel of that first idea is what develops my is lyric. It, You mentioned before that your wife sang on some stuff. Is she musical? or did She's it? very musical. We were both in school. We were both music majors together. And ah. then we both actually changed because I didn't, because the only thing I saw at the time was I could teach, like, it was very classical based. Right. Um, so I, I was worried that I would just be doing, um, it, it was a Christian college, it was a Pacific university. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a lot of church music, like headed into church and I've done, and I do music at my church also, but I didn't see myself being the director mm-hmm. or teaching band. Um, and so I decided to switch, I switched to English. Um, and my wife actually and you switched. you speak it very well. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes. And then my wife, um, switched from her music degree into um, social work. Right. Um, and now we're both, we're both teachers. So uh, 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 
Yeah, so I don't know what the point was. Lyrics first. Okay. Never. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And I saw another question go by about oh, yeah. vocals. Uh, how do you get um, the distorted vocal sound? Back oh, in my day, I, you got that with a loose wire or a, a cheap microphone. I just use a plug-in. What's your plug-in? Uh, it comes with Pro Tools, and it's called Air Distortion. Sounds That's really it. good. It's just, that. a, it's just a generic thing. I've tried... A few times, like singing through a distortion pedal through my amp, but I don't always get the control I want. Mm -hmm. And I just add a, what I a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have my clean vocal, and then I'll copy and paste that whole track, and then another track I'll make it a lot thinner, and add a distortion or do some play with the play with the effects so that, and then I'll mix back the real vocal so it's more like it's felt. Right. And then that gnarly vocals up front, but that the, the presence of the other vocal is there. And then Pedro did stuff with it. I don't even know what he did. He did cool stuff that I don't know. Pedro so doesn't look like a guy that would add distortion to anything. He would. I know. He's he would, a. He's a. He, he, he just Pedro looks so. He looks mm, so sweet and innocent. Yes, he does. But he's he's a tiger, a lion. I can't uh, read my own writing. <laughs> some dangerous animal that looks cute, but then will rip your head off. Like a lion. Oh, how do you distort vocals? Okay, I thought that said, how do you fart something? But um, Okay, I think I got all the questions on that one. Uh, what else did... Something else I wanted Can you to write think. when you are feeling blue? And if you do, what comes out? <laughs> uh, half the songs you heard. <laughs> I, I, I can write the sad songs pretty easily. And I do. I, I turn to music when I'm feeling blue. And when I'm excited, music... Lots of that. Okay, I want to play... I haven't played this yet. That's Who I Am, right? That's Who I Am. Sure, play that one. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is with Steve Collum. Now, listen to this song. Tell me which brand this would be a commercial for. I heard the chorus on that first time I listened to it earlier today and I thought in the early iPod commercials where they had the silhouettes against mm. the psychedelic mm -hmm. background, the chorus for this just would have been a home run for that. I know. Apple I know. Would... Apple, I would like you to relaunch <laughs> that same campaign and choose a different song. Yeah. I, I, I'm really trying to pitch that tonight, that people would you know, re-release the DVD. All based on your music. All based on my music. Yeah. It seems a little selfish. You know, you don't get what you don't ask for. It's true. You got to ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. How did I learn Pro Tools? Ooh. Uh, I'll answer that question after these messages. This is with Pedro Costa also. This for a 30 cool. second commercial we were trying to make that for a 30 second commercial so that's 30 seconds short and sweet well, uh, stop <laughs> alright more questions from you guys because we're getting close on time but we got a little more uh, let's see new laptops for sale how did you learn Pro Tools um, I had a friend who helped me set it up so I didn't do it on my own um, he showed me helped me set up the basic software I just really wanted to know how do I hit record, 
so I can get tracks and get a whole bunch of tracks. That's mm -hmm. like that was my initial starting point. And once I figured that out, I just, you know, as I needed something new, I would I would ask. How much do you think you've invested in your studio, and can you describe what you've got? Thousands of dollars. I mean, like, um, but it's, uh, it's not like twenty, thirty, forty grand. It's no, more no, like it's, a five it's probably less. Grand. Okay, so my so my computer was maybe eight hundred dollars. Pro Tools I got with a, a soundboard that was about nine hundred, and and I could have got you know. I got it because I wanted to record my band and we needed like eight inputs, but mm -hmm. I could probably do most of what I do with two inputs. Right. So, uh, you know, I've got, I've got a board that does, and it only does seven now because one of the channels went bad, but um, <laughs> I could probably do it with like the Apogee duet yeah. and I'd be very happy because I could do vocal and a voice, but I also record a lot of like local bands come in and I'll record them. So when that's do you another- find the time for this stuff? I just, I, I have the time for it. <laughs> you have your wife and kids chained in the basement. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. But I, I don't. I, um, I don't do a lot of other. You know, like I cut out a lot of other things. I watch a lot less TV. You know, yeah. and right. I, would you rather watch TV or have your music? On I would. It? Right. Exactly. Yeah. And and so I, um, I, I record band. I don't record bands like every weekend. I've got an ongoing relationship with you know five or six different artists, and I. Um, they come back, you know, every year, every other year sometimes. And mm -hmm. so it helps support my studio habit. It helps pay for microphones. Um, I'm starting to get royalties. My wife and I just got, oh my gosh, we got for Christmas. We got, we have a Christmas album we recorded in 2004 and we got back royalties from, uh, we signed up for a sound exchange, I think. Oh yeah. And got a thousand dollar check. For Christmas, it was the best wow. Christmas present ever. For like, it was, all, and almost all of it came from um, Pandora. Wow! Was so you from, must have had like we are fifty million downloads. Right. It was from two thousand and four to two thousand and eight. Wow. So I think two hundred fifty bucks a year. Yeah, and I mean, we were like, we our job. I I didn't believe. I thought it was a fake email. Like I thought it was a scam. <laughs> and then I looked at my bank account, and there was a thousand dollars. I'm like, what? Wow. Yeah, that was that was nice. I mean, that had to be a ton of so, streams because Pandora, you know, doesn't pay a whole lot per stream. No, but I think because we were in earlier before, you oh, know, the, before... They had a different the, pricing structure? I think maybe that we got a different... Wow. Uh, that's, that's all the way I can figure out how we got that much money because... Let's see, Casey said something. It's cost of plenty. Ha, ha, ha. It's cost of guiles. <laughs> Be nice, Casey. Alphabetical. I'll, I'll, I'll steal your table <laughs> at the next restaurant I see you at. Um, we call ourselves Dove Pilot. Or That's a, yeah. Pedro and I have our band. Our band name is Dove Pilot. Got it. Uh, and uh, because we knew we were going to be collaborating more, and Giles Costa just doesn't sound as exciting. Right. So we wanted something that sounded a little like we're a band, and uh, so that's our band name. Um, sound Exchange, yeah. I think it was Sound Exchange. Yeah, and they've sponsored the rally. They weren't there this year, but they sponsored the rally for three or four years. So, so I didn't know, but yeah, sign up. And and then that's a record that um, you know we recorded a long time ago, but it because we got it in a digital stream. It, they it links to a guy named Sufjan Stevens, mm -hmm. a very famous indie artist. Um, and he has Christmas albums, and so every time someone puts, oh, I, right. I put that in my descriptor when right. I sent it to them. Smart. I said Sufjan, and I didn't realize at the time, like, but every time they play his songs, which every Christmas right. people put in Sufjan, you always come up. Ours is the also, second song. Nice. Very, Usually, very so yeah, that wasn't. I just it worked out nicely. Which one of you is the <laughs> dove? I'm. Well, we of course Pedro is the dove. And and I'm the pilot. And that no, I don't know. It's a great question. Um, <laughs> let's see if I've got any questions that we haven't covered yet. Thank you for your patience, chat oh. message board people. Uh, how how do you find new music? Um, I mean, you're oh. obviously very in tune with new music. So do you use Spotify, radio, blogs, YouTube, all of the above? Um, yeah, all of the above. I have. You know, I have some friends since college that will recommend things. 
they'll say, oh my gosh, or they'll just post something on Facebook, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I'll just check it out. My stu So my students will tell me about stuff. And your students My middle, middle school, school students. So they're like listening to, you know, um, well, L LMFAO at one point, like, they, like I, or like when um, Dubstep started, I have students listening to it. I'm like, what the heck is that? You know, like I couldn't believe that there was like a kid actually had this music that had found it. And so, like, I started hearing stuff like that. And now when my kids tell me, oh, there's this new thing, I, I kind of check it out. I listen to it. Um, taxi listings, huge yeah. source for me to find new music. And then um, there's just, I think, I, I thought about something. I really think it's important that, um, you know, as musicians, that we keep looking for music we love. I mean, it, I think it's super important. I think it's important to be diving in and finding stuff out there. You know, if you're saying all this new stuff just sounds the same, I, I think that is a bad mindset to get into. I think you got to be in the mindset that, I mean, if kids are getting really excited about music, you know, that's what, when I was a kid, I got really excited about music that, that I heard. that stuff makes me sick. I don't want to do what's on the radio. We hear that <laughs> all the time. It frustrates people and, and they don't keep trying. They give up yeah. because of that. My you next question not. for you was going to be, and, and considering that you're, I literally thought you were 27 years old, maybe 30. <laughs> so considering that you're not of that generation, right. that you're, you're a generation beyond that mm -hmm. and that you're staying current it, is much to your... Um, Credit. Thank you. That's you're the word I wanted. One of the things that frustrates a lot of our members is trying to shake off or move past their dated sounding vibe that's reflective of the era they mm. grew up in musically. Yet their instrumentation isn't really that radically different. So what can you do to take those same instruments? For instance, your, your guitar vocal stuff. You could be James Taylor or you could be Sufjan Stevens. Right. So I, what's mm. the difference? You know, how, how do you turn yourself into Sufjan from James? All right, well... So I I didn't grow up with James Taylor so much. Okay, well, so I, I'm, talking now, about, I'm talking how, about them, not you. Right, okay, so right, much. okay. I, one, I just think kind of immersing yourself in some of those tracks. So if you see a track coming up again and again and again, which I've seen, Black Keys. If you're not listening to Black Keys, if you're not at least trying to, why are you trying to make film and TV music? I mean, at least listen to them. Uh, if you don't like that kind of distorted blues aggressive style, um, just even the production stuff, like when they're introducing new elements, I think mm -hmm. would apply across the board to other pop stuff. Um, it's not that radically different. It's always a matter of no, degrees. You know, it's it like is ten or fifteen percent different. Right, but, but many of the 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 basic elements are the same. Right. I mean, the the, the um, a lot of the indie pop stuff now, um, uh, Grace and the Nocturnals, or. Uh, uh, oh. I got a little bit longer. I got a way to whoever that is. They're indie pop. Don't know. Um, you do. You no, just don't know. I, really I know don't. you do. I'm You've, old. You okay? Well, you probably heard it. I mean, I. I That's honestly, no excuse. You should be listening. I do. I actually look <laughs> at our listings and go research. You know, after the staff is researched. Group love. Oh, That's group love. That was Adam. I White's. know you've heard of group Adam. Love. Yeah, we we're just talking about him on Friday of last week. Um, Adam White's, who was our VP last year, Adam White's loved group love. They're great. And they're amazing live band too. Oh my gosh, I saw them live and I'm like, I get it, man. I mean, their songs are catchy, but they were never... they were charismatic live too. Wow, like good to know. Great band. That's something Black Keys. I've also heard like some of these bands, um, from an artist side, and I don't know. I don't know how many people here are are participating going in as an artist, you know, um, but, uh, I mean, seeing some of those bands live and just, uh, to me, I mean, blows my mind, like Black Keys, I've heard is just an amazing live band. I mean, they have been working at it for so long. I remember seeing their names in like little cheap, those cheesy magazines you yeah. get, like smaller than LA Weekly kind of thing. Um, and seeing them and going, oh, those guys are kind of cool. Oh, I thought they just cropped up two years ago. Right. No, the, most of those, I mean, No Doubt was around for... I think 10 years in Orange County yeah. and they were getting ready to quit when Tragic Kingdom broke. Well, here, I know the story of that one intimately <sighs> because a really close friend of mine signed them. Um, uh, Tony Ferguson <sighs> wow, signed them. Wow, that's a good sign. And uh, I remember they remade that record like three or four times. I mean, wow. literally, they would turn in a finished record and <sighs> he would say, not good enough. And he hooked them up with another producer. Oh, it man. got to the point where the band wouldn't even talk to their A&R guy who found them, signed them, <laughs> and would give his life for them. They would only communicate with him through Jimmy Iovine, who was CEO of the label at the time. And uh, 
He was right. He just kept saying, that record is not as good as you are. Go make another one. Wow. And, and, they, and sold they did it. 23, 24 million records. Yeah, that established them for, for yeah. all time. But they, but they had done a lot of work. So I think that takes us back to earlier is the time you invest um, in just playing and writing songs, it will pay back. And it's like none of this, nothing I've done where I've gotten placements was something that happened overnight. It was me working at it, meeting people in the forum, talking, um, learning from my mistakes. I've got lots of returns. Um, I now have maybe a 50-50 return forward. You know, like I think my rate's been pretty good. I posted a lot of that in the forums. I posted. I think a lot of people think that the thing, guys like you are, who are having success get forwarded like 95% of the time. Nah, it's, it's not true. No, it's, it's, I have lots of returns, you know, and, and I try new style. I tried like that horror music yeah. one and I thought I nailed it, but I did not nail it. I got it sent back. But, but I, you know what? I never would have tried that and it was fun and um, you know, I'm my wheelhouse is growing larger each. It's obvious each I time. Mean, I, that was the thing that impressed me most. The first thing that I ever heard of yours was one of the slow, intimate, um, you know, guitar vocal things, and I just loved the intimacy mm -hmm. of it. And then as I started going down the list, I went, "Wow, this guy is all over the place and doing it all really well." So congratulations on that, because um, a lot of people find one thing they do well and they get stuck there. Mm. And you obviously push yourself. I know that Paul and, and some of the other guys that I've watched mature you know, over the last few years are, are all people who try new things. You can't be afraid to fail. Yeah, yeah. I think I, it's, I just, that now, the, with being in FOM, yeah. I really felt like there were no rules. I could do whatever I wanted. I made stupid kid songs. The song was 10 seconds long. The song was five minutes long. And there was no expectation, which I really like about the songwriting group. And I, I, I want to challenge, like, if you ever feel like you're just not growing creatively, doing something like that is just very freeing. Th this was like, for me, like writing a novel. It actually came out of a, a website called NaNoWriMo, where people write a month, write a novel in a month of wow. November. And so the guy uh, that... The guy, um, his name's Burr Settles. I've met him. Great, awesome guy. Um, he like a novel a month. Holy yeah, isn't that crazy? A novel yeah. in a month. No, I can't even and, imagine doing and, a chapter. But in a month. but that's but it's the same thing with songs. Like yeah. people think I can't write a song. Yeah, you can. Why don't you today? Why don't you pick some chords? You know, and then tomorrow, why don't you write a song and focus on anger or focus on jealousy? And then the next day, why don't you put the pieces together? You know, like, There's so, it, it's, a so form, many, it's a choice. So many ideas for song starts staring you in the face every day. As you guys have heard me say a million times, Deb and I go to the movies almost every week. And I'm constantly telling Deb, don't forget this line. Uh, we heard one in that movie, Her, with uh, whatever his name was the other night. There was a great line in there. And I come home and write the stuff down in post-it notes and give it to my daughter, Hannah, for song ideas. And she <laughs> looks at me like I'm an idiot. And you know, a month later, a song comes out. And, oh, lo and behold, gee, I wonder where you got that idea. But some other really great writer, you don't write a movie in Hollywood without having something going on. Or you don't become a novelist you know, or write a TV show. It's rare that somebody who sucks gets to that level. Or so, just does it the first time. Like they, oh, yeah. They just wrote the screenplay. Now, the, there are people that wrote that great screenplay. Um, but I'll, here's another author that I recommend for songwriters, Stephen King. Yeah. He's got a book called On Writing. It is genius. And it, it's he sits down like a job every day, 9 to 5 or whatever time he sets. And he writes. And he just writes. And he doesn't edit him. Oh, this is crucial, I think. He doesn't edit himself. He doesn't self-censor until he has created something. Like he's got a whole thing. Then he goes back and he's merciless and he he destroys it and rips yeah. it apart. But I think a lot of people um, hamstring themselves, uh, chop themselves short. Trying by, to perfect every long as they Trying to perfect go. every long as they go. Yeah. And then there's no, and they kill the life in it. Mm -hmm. Um, they kill the spark that would have made it. Like the thing that, like when you were a kid and you would have just picked up an instrument and just jammed on it. Right. You know, it, we've got to go, we have to go back to that in some sense because that's what connects with people. The reason we love a lot of the stuff we love is because there is some life to it. There's something that resonates. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not technical g greatness to it, but I think we have to get back to that um, 
not over thinking everything I, there's obviously i mean if you look at some of those like amazing prog rock albums or whatever i mean obviously a lot of thought went into the arrangements and the parts mm-hmm. and the recordings um but um i think it's got to start with some kind of unconscious um just enjoying being with your instrument and your voice or your and like someone was mentioning how do i do it you know i only play percussion um amanda uh, and I'd say you can write a lot of great songs with just percussion and just singing over it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, hip hop is all beat, mostly beat. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a barely, maybe melody. Ima- ba- yeah, barely melody, you know, it's more like the rhythmic thing. So, uh, like I write songs where I'm doing hip hop and don't, I don't feel ashamed of it. I mean, some of them come flat or whatever, but it's fun. I, I wrote one for this songwriting contest. I really like has this like kind of rap section. I don't know how, why I did that, but I just felt right. Like when I heard the music and I just started doing it and it was cool. I, I want to develop it more. Um, but I think not being afraid um, uh, to, to not be so hard on yourself um, to let ideas come out. And then if you get that whole idea and it comes out, then you can go back and be a little more, you know, a little harsh on it so that it can reach that broadcast quality so you can bring it to that level. But I think in the initial stages when you're creating, just create and enjoy the creation process. And then you're going to get to, um, you're going to get to something that you're way happier with in the end. than is if you labor and labor and labor and hurt yourself over the process there's a point where you need to do that you we've, know like, we've had this discussion with rob shirelli he brought it up um when he was doing the session at the road rally this year he's brought it up on taxi tv which is don't let perfection kill you people will sit there and worry about a snare sound or a hi-hat beat mm. and rob says just pick something that works so find a drum loop and just lay that down and get the song down you can always go back and put the hi-hat Mm-hmm. You know, do what you want to do with it. Right. right, and you could still kill it in the mix by spending that much time yeah. worrying about, you know, if I did this or this or that. I mean, and there are, like I said, there are genres like um, where the lyric is more important or where the feel is more important. I think in general, if it feels good, that's more... <laughs> If it feels good, do it. <laughs> no, but I really, I think that there's a lot of times where if it feels good, that's more important than you perfecting each thing. I mean, if you listen to all those old recordings that you love from those seminal bands, those recordings are not flawless. They're not perfect. They just have a vibe to them. There's a something about it that's just really exciting. It wouldn't, you know, I, there, I mean, the Beatles recordings, there's some great recordings too. I mean, it don't. You know, the energy was so the obvious. energy was so yeah, obvious. and that's because they played the stuff live a thousand times before they ever walked in the studio. Right. But right. yeah, and, you know, as I've said a million times on the show, I worked a lot with Neil Young and he at one point very early on in our time together, he said, OK, no more limiters, no more equalizers. From now on, just use a microphone, a wire, and a fader, and don't worry about the recording stuff. Just capture what I'm doing. And and that was life-changing for me. Mm. Capturing the vibe. Capture the vibe, people. Yeah. Well, Capture the vibe. That's the new sticker. Just pretend <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. Capture the vibe. <laughs> Trademark. Right. We have Everybody. gone for an hour and 35 minutes, which is probably the second longest show I've ever done. So wow. um, thank you for driving all the way here from San Dimas. He's going to get rewarded with awesome sushi now. We're Woo-hoo. going out to dinner. And uh, thank you guys for being such a great audience. And have a really, really blessed 2014. I hope that you guys and your families um, spend a warm and wonderful evening together. Everybody, don't drive drunk. Um, and just may 2014 be wonderful. Everything that you hope for, take steps. You know what? Nothing ever drops out of the sky and lands in your lap. In Baby a big, steps. Yeah. Yep. Pick one thing to start out 2014 doing well. Like, I'm going to learn Easy Drummer, or I'm going to learn Pro Tools, or I'm going to learn GarageBand, wherever you are. Make a commitment to something and learn it. It's not as hard as exercising and dieting. <laughs> Steve used to weigh 300 pounds. That's right. Look at me now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, man. This Thank was, you, oh, it, it, do you believe it? it? An hour and 36 I, minutes. That, it felt like it 15, did. didn't it? Hopefully right. it felt like an hour of fifteen to you guys. <laughs> no, they're too. all still there. Let's see how many people are still in there. 
decent. We still have over, uh, over 100 people after an hour and a half. Good. All right. Thanks, you guys. Um, and I will not see you on Wednesday, but we will be back next Monday with another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Oh, great beard. <laughs> Here we go, beard cam. It's the beard. <laughs>